All right, welcome back. So we're going to play North Korea's version of Trumpopoly. <laughs> Still can't get that out of my system. Cause, wow. So let's go ahead and play. She grabs what I can only assume is the original leader token and places it on the stay, stay square. Here are the other tokens. Pick, pick whichever one you'd like. There's the Korean flag on a pole, a bowl of kimchi, another leader figure, a nuclear warhead, and what appears to be a blob with a muzzle. Guess that token slipped past quality control. A blob with a muzzle? Um, I'm guessing that's supposed to be one of the original Trumpopoly tokens. I did not mean to click on that. Okay. <clears throat> Guess I'll take the bowl of kimchi. Great, I'll take the unified thought bubble of the workers' party. You mean that blob is actually supposed to look like that? Please kindly refrain from insulting a token of the workers' party. Sorry, my bad. We roll off to see who get, goes first, and Yuji gets the honor. She does so and moves her token. Uruguay. Okay, everyone. Chip in your share so we can secure the embassy in space. Come again? We all have to pay? We explained this earlier. The money is communal from the leader. We all have to pool inequally to get what we want in all of the countries. But that means at the end of the game, we'd all have the same amount of money. Of course we will. Don't be silly. We are all equals in the eyes of the leader. Now fork over some cash, Yankee Doodle. Would you mind not calling me that? You are American, right? Yankee Doodle Dandy. I don't think they even sing that in elementary school anymore. Anyway, it's my turn. And I stop at Rhodesia. Everyone kick in. Did the makers of this game not know that Rhodesia isn't a country anymore? Now I'm going to look that up because I'm curious. Future Sean, if you will. Maybe. Or don't. It depends on your mood. How old is this game anyway? A minor detail. Besides, there aren't many other nations nearby worth annexing. It's your turn, by the way. Okay, I'm rolling. Common Worker's Chest. Oh, you get to pick a card from the red pile. Okay, then the card reads, The leader needs everyone in Sweden. Move all tokens to Sweden and pay double for anything purchased as compensation for leader's visit with the Swedish bikini team. I don't think there ever really was a Swedish bikini team. It was just a beer commercial gag. I've heard that rumor as well. As if women would have gentified themselves in small amounts of clothing for the pleasure of men. Ho <laughs> ho! You don't know what you're gonna get into at the end of this game, do you, girl? At least. Uh. Let's just keep going. You want to talk, and apparently I have a new item in my inventory. You, you know what? Let's check what that is. Okay, that was pointless. Um. Completely ignore that. Uh, so, either way, you want to talk, those scores don't leave much to the imagination. She hops up faster than the Lance Corporal trying to avoid duty. STOP LOOKING! Purple suits you really well, Yunji. They're not purple, they're lavender! Why am I explaining this? Wait. Oh, oh dear. Pansu o mimashita. Uh, good question. It's your turn. We continue playing on like this for hours. Opportunity card. Go directly to Yodok for getting intoxicated and failing to secure an embassy in Greenland. Again? I swear they put 10 of those cards in this set. And hours. How could you fail that roll to take over Norway, Sweden, Finland block? Those pesky Finns? It's their fault that the Spokia phones and Santa Claus backing. And hours. Junk. Junk. Junk! Wake up! No need to shout in my ear, sister. After what seems like an eternity, we finally decide to finish up. Oh god, can we please stop? It's 1 a.m. We still don't have enough to buy embassies in the Mexico, Canada, USA block. The leader in this game sure doesn't mind taking back his seed money for his own purposes. That pay the leader's memoirs card is brutal. I think we can stop now. Besides, it looks like Yunji is out cold. Yunji is on the floor, curled into a ball, snoring away. I try to nudge her awake to no avail. She's down for the count. Think you could carry her to bed? I'll put away the game. Sure thing. Good night, Jong. Pleasant dreams. 
I kneel down and gently put my arms under Yunji, lifting her off the floor. She's pretty light. Well, it's not exactly like she's carrying around much. We walk her to a room and put her on her bed and pull the blanket over her as she mumbles something in her sleep. Uh, death, America, pig dog. Love you, North Koreans, too. Uh, one Korea, idiot. Can't help but smile as I head back to my room to lay down for the night. Maybe we could do something other than attempt subterfuge on fear foreign governments via a bad knockoff of a board game tomorrow. Gee, I hope so. In my shock at the loud alarm, I have jumped out of bed. Okay, more like I fell out of bed. I have to mess with my phone a bit to get this alarm music to turn off, but the bright light coming from the screen is blinding at this hour. I don't even know what time it is. It looks like my clock is out. It's pretty dark inside, too. Actually, trying to turn the lamp on does nothing either. Checking my phone again, I see it's 4.47 a.m. Must be another one of those infamous power outages. I sit back down on the bed and consider taking a shower to pass the time. However, I definitely can make out water running in the background. Guess someone beat me to it. DON'T GO AND LOOK! Kicking back on the bed, I let my eyelids rest a bit before I gather my thoughts about the coming day. It's certainly been something of an experience since I've arrived in Korea. Can't complain too much about the company as... The girls are both cute in their fun little way. But their devotion to this glorious leader borders on creepy. Something is off about this country. Dangerously off. Only now that's occurring to you. At least I made raid on the DLAB and got free Korean lessons, whatever that means. Well, as free as two years get getting the shit shoot out of me in Monterey Bay can be. I just never thought I'd be in the country and on vacation at that. Either way, I need to stay focused and watch what I say. People here are already give me death glares whenever I'm out. Well, dozed off for a second there. I wonder what time it is now. Uh, it's quiet. I guess the shower's free now. Knock first! I strip down to my silkies, grab a towel from my travel bag, and tiptoe over to the bathroom. If someone is still asleep, I'd had better wake them up. Especially if it's Yunji. I can almost feel her fist in my gut just thinking about it. Once I step inside the bathroom, I can smell the sweet scent of shampoo and, and feel the warm, humid air wash over me. Take a few seconds to feel around for a light switch. Click. No effect. Guess the power is still out. Just make sure nobody else is in here. I don't want another repeat of you-know-what. Drop my silkies and toss my towel over my shoulder. Taking one more shot as it, I rock the light switch a few more times. Click. Click. Phew! The low hum of power courses through the old wire and wiring in the room as I'm blinded by the whole room lighting up. Ah! And there it is! I panic at the sound of somebody shouting and flail my arms before my hands land on something... soft? Do it! Every time! Every time! What? After a few moments, I regain my vision. Oh, shit. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, dear! <laughs> well, future Sean, you know what to do. And who's that blonde guy? I don't know. Maybe I've gone Super Saiyan from the shock. I would say good morning, but it seems you've already had one. Oh, jeez. What? She gestures down toward the silkies around my ankles and my hand on her chest. Oh. Oh, shit! I yanked them back up around my waist. Shh, Yunji is asleep. Let's just... Pretend this didn't happen. It was an accident. Mistake. Oh, maybe a few more minutes. You can use the shower when I'm done. Oh, God, this is awkward. Sorry, I'll knock next time. Which is what you should have done from the beginning, you Super Saiyan idiot. It's okay, just, just keep this between you and me for now. Sure thing. God, and I felt bad for Makoto. Poor Jong. Jong doesn't bother to explain anything else as she skips out of the bathroom and over the Yunji's bedroom. However, she does glance back at me once more than once. I'm just glad I didn't get slugged here, but that comment just now, something seemed off. I wish I knew what was going on. Well, nothing to be done about it now. I hop in the shower and draw the curtain. By the way, I used all the... Ah! Hot water. John giggles and ducks out of the room again. She could have warned me a bit earlier. I guess that's a fair bit of revenge. Working quickly, I grab the soap and wash up and head back to the bedroom to change. After pulling on my shirt, I notice the, uh, my walkie-talkie with a keypad flashing. 
<laughs> Looks like I have a text message from John. John, breakfast is ready, Romeo. Guess I'll text you back. It's a ten. I'll be right over. God, I hate hitting the number keys over and over to get a letter. How'd they ever survive texting in the 1990s? My fingers are already cramping. What I wouldn't give for autocorrect. Well, that response was fast. John, and you're going to teach UG proper English. Maybe I'd best just get to breakfast. I hear the girls giggling in the other room anyway. Nice to see you two getting your ha-has in at my expense. I thought all Americans were proficient in cutting-edge technology. Hey, you can't even work texting functions on a modern cell phone. The phone you gave me, as well as the ones you have, are not on the cutting edge. They're dinosaurs from the 90s. Only old people use these models anymore. I'm guessing you never got to see the phone that was confiscated from me, did you? Not really, no. But I'm certain it wasn't anything close to what you're using now. If only she knew how right she was. While still being incorrect. That reminds me, I have to charge my phone for the day. I'll be right back. Anyway, I'm not used to the phone you gave me, so don't take that as an indication of my English skills. Yunji whips out her phone and taps on the keys like lightning. Yunji, if you say so. Yunji sticks out her tongue at me. Thanks for the support. Zhang pokes her head back in. Sorry, did I interrupt a lover's quarrel? Like I ever... Wait. <laughs> well, be a bit more cheerful, sister. Zhang smiles brightly. Well, aren't you a basket of sunshine today? Got good news? It hit me by surprise, one could say. I avert my eyes as she says this, but I catch her blush as she says it. Hmm. Let's just eat. I made eggs and toast. Boiled eggs and toast? That sounds pleasantly different. Well, I want to, uh, I want to try a more traditional American breakfast. Don't think too much about it. It was just something I wanted to try. You've never had boiled eggs and toast before? Well, typically it's boiled rice and kimchi. When is it not boiled rice and kimchi? Lunch is boiled noodles and kimchi. Somehow I think you're missing the point. And what do you eat in your oh-so-glorious army? In boot camp, it's like... Like... I don't want to talk about it. I'll take you at your word. Anyway, let's eat. We sit down and Yuji serves up boiled eggs and toast as well as some rice and beans. Simple fare, but it's all been prepared rather well. Of course, I clean up afterwards, and it seems like the girls are used to that now, as they don't complain. Once done, they approach me with their map again. So, what date route are we going to today? The way you say that makes me think this whole thing has been scripted. Really? A game? Scripted? No, no, no. Hurry up and decide so we can get ready. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. She groans as I salute her while saying this. Well, time to look at the map and click a place to go to. I mean, a place to go. Alright. So. Now, um. Okay, I didn't really get to go through it last time, but we probably didn't get a good look at the map last time. So we have the North Korean flag here, or is that China? I don't know, but. Uh, this mount says, also not Pyongyang. Uh, this thing right here says to buy cabbage, salt, bullets, rice. Um, no go to Nippon. Well, okay. Um, not Pyongyang. Or not Pyongyang. Yeah, that too. That's Pyongyang. Uh, can't go there. Um, I guess and that's the glorious leader or whatever. Are we to play? Well, wall, you shall not pass evil, occupy Korea. Evil this way, we will liberate you. And, uh, bikini spirits here, okay? Um, alright, well, we haven't done anything with Jong yet, and, well, technically, no, we have done something with Jong quite recently, might I add, but what I'm saying is she needs more screen time, and not in an invasive way, so let's see here. Um, uh, Kaesong, Manzude, and... Rugna, Runga, Rugna PPG. Um, hmm. Well, let's see here. I like the one. You know what? This is close to the glorious leader. Let's go here. Well, I suppose a trip to Korea wouldn't be complete without checking out Manzu Day, whatever that is. Yes, it's one of our most heavily visited tourist destinations. As such, only the top guides may take you. 
So I'll be spending the day with... Yunji will be accompanying you on this trip. Um, it said John, didn't it? She is? I will? No, I'm just pulling your arm, comrade. I'll be your guide. Oh. Well, okay. Thank you, because I didn't want to chew you out of your screen time. Leg. The expression is pulling your leg. Don't scare me like that. You know I'm on probation from escorting tourists at Mud's Day. Probation? That sounds like an interesting story. And it's one you're not going to hear. Figured you wouldn't tell me. Guess I'll just have to coax it out of Jean instead. Good luck. She pinky swore to complete secrecy. If you buy me lunch on our date today, I'll tell you. Deal. You! You kept the slime, Benedict Garfield! And here we see how you ended up failing Dipl Diplomacy 101 this semester. She's not doing too well on her American generals, either. You stay out of this! I don't see what the big deal is, EMG. You were completely justified in what you did. But they still made an example out of the whole situation. Punishing me over punishing the Taurus, that hurt. Wow, sounds serious. What in the world happened? I'll tell you on the way there. I was escorting a Russian tourist who used his phone to take a picture of the statues of our most revered leaders. I didn't realize until the end of the tour when he showed me I was bowing in respect in the photo. That doesn't sound too bad. Not only did he get a shot of my skirt tucked into my unmentionables, he also didn't get entirely both the statues in the shot. The nerve! I swiped his phone and stomped on it, and they gave me probation. Now you don't have to buy John lunch, do Yeah. You really are such a child at times, Yunji. Don't worry about it. I'm sure there are other Yunji stories you could swap me for lunch. I hate you both! Just, just go already. Go on with your day. Have fun. I'll be here with my pity celebration. Uh, don't be that way, Yunji. When we get back, I'll help you with your English. If you're done with your pity party by then. Oh, little pity party. My English is fine. I'm going to my room. And she crosses her arms in anger as she tries to storm out. Somebody's jealous she didn't get to go with me. Sorry, Yunji. I'll miss you today. I see you every day, so I probably won't. That you were the sweet one. What's with all the jabs today? Military secret. You'll understand next year. Part of your training involves teasing your sister. Teasing friends in general. It's the best way to gain people's confidence so you can manipulate them into giving up state secrets. Well, that and womanly charms. But enough about work, let's get ready! I'm beginning to feel extremely uncomfortable. Then you should change into some comfortable clothes. It's going to be fairly warm today. Meanwhile, you'll be dressed in full uniform, making me feel even more out of place. Yes, that is the rule for tour guides, but in full dress wherever you're on duty. I bought my Marine Corps Moto t-shirt. I could wear that. You could if you like the idea of running from the local authorities all day. I know, I know, low profile. I wonder what you'd look like on one of our uniforms. Or in one of our uniforms. The outfit for the men is a little plain, which would go perfect with your personnel. <coughs> ah! 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 Oh! Oh god! That hurt! And near I thought I'd won you over with my sharp wit and winning smile. Don't let her fool you, she's totally smitten with you. Is that a fact? What? Hold on. It's not like I... John's the one always writing about you in her diary. How sweet you are. How cute you are. How she wants to ki... In a flash, John has Yunji in a headlock and is dragging her back to the bedroom. Yunji is wailing the whole way. A few short minutes later, John is back in the living room with her sightly, too friendly smile. At this rate, we'll be here all day. Follow me. You can get changed into your outdoor clothes so that we can go. I know where the bedroom is. You don't have to lead me anywhere. What, unless you plan on changing me too. A tempting offer, but not while Yunji is around. She might get angry. I don't see why, but it doesn't seem like she's taken that great an interest in me. Most of the time, she just insults me. I see the rumors about American men being clueless about women holds true. Anyway, get ready. The trolley bus will be here soon. She leaves me to go get ready herself. Well, nothing left to do but get dressed. I'm not sure what's up with these two, but... Seems more and more like they're competing over me. Here I thought I was just going to be touring with some military buds. And now I've got two girls fighting over who gets to go out with me. Well, it could be worse. It's not like it was the most... I'm the most in-demand guy back at home. Goddamn boot lieutenants with all their bling. Heh. 
Remember that one stupid second lieutenant he had in Hawaii? We had in Hawaii. That dude was an idiot, and he kept... Yeah, he kept getting award after award. We used to call him the Bling Fuhrer behind his back. <laughs> Good times. I don't know any of this stuff because I know nothing about being in the military. Anyway, this vacation would, vacation would be much better if I weren't constantly being spied on by these two. Still, they're both pretty damn cute. After tossing on a pair of jeans and a plain t-shirt, I grab my wallet and phone and step out. As expected, Jung is in full dress uniform. Yoonji is nowhere to be found. I guess Yoonji didn't want to see us off then? She's a little busy in her room, blowing off some steam. Let me guess, she's tied up or something. Anyway, the trolley bus will be here in a minute, so let's wait outside. Okay. Well, and I think we'll leave off there, so... Next time on this game, we go to that place. Don't you just love how descriptive I am? I'll see you guys next time, I guess.